What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about how Canadian maple syrup is made. Now, as far as Americans go, we have some weird fascination and obsession with associating Canada with maple syrup. I don't know if Canada appreciates that or not, but it's the truth. It's the, the cold, hard facts of the matter. Uh, <laughs> and as far as I've learned, apparently Canada is indeed the world's leading manufacturer of maple syrup. And not the crap that we buy here in our little American grocery stores. Real maple syrup. And, <laughs> and that's why I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate today about learning where this comes from. And here we have the Garland Sugar Shack, which I found is this, uh, you know, authentic Canadian maple syrup distillery, manufacturer, farmer. I don't know what, <laughs> do you farm maple syrup? Anyway, <laughs> it's located in Ontario, I think, in the little description here. Um, finally have the opportunity to show you one of Canada's most well-known exported products, maple syrup. Canada produces around 80% of the world's maple syrup. 80%! I... That blew my mind. Blew my mind. And maple syrup is considered a luxury food item internationally. Indeed. It is very much a luxury. I, I'm pretty sure I've never had maple syrup from Canada. I've only had the weird zero sugar, <laughs> totally unnatural uh, stuff that we get in our... Um, grocery stores here in America. So, this is probably going to make me a bit hungry, but that won't stop me. Uh, I'm fascinated with how things are made. It's one of my favorite things to look up on YouTube, how stuff is made. So without any further ado, let's check it out. Making maple syrup. Canadian maple syrup, mind you. We're here today at Garland Sugar Shack. We're gonna do some uh, demonstration on how maple syrup is made. Yes. Maple syrup has been a uh, childhood dream and adventure for me. Okay, I gotta pause it. I'm sorry, but these containers are next level. Um, even this container here. Oh, let me rewind it a little bit. This guy, this jug he's holding. And these, don't get me started on these. This is like, whoa, what's going on? What are we celebrating here? <laughs> this is, <laughs> these are fancy bottles. Are these common in Canada? Because we, we don't get bottles like this. This is how you know it's the good stuff. For me, especially, uh, I started making maple syrup. I was 13 years old, and it grew part of the uh, family farm. Behind us here, we have the first building that I started making maple syrup in. This was one of my grandfather's first buildings on the farm. Wow. Uh, century farm now, I may add. I'm third generation. Wow. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy seeing how maple syrup is made today. I will. I will. I am, I'm at least familiar with this aspect of it. That you are drilling into a tree, you gotta get the sap out of the tree into a bucket or something. Or something. Oh yeah, that thing that you hammer into it. It's like a little spout. So the first step to making maple syrup is tapping the trees. This right. is their traditional way to do it with a spile and a bucket. Tapping. Wow. In 2002, we got around to having 850 buckets, so that was oh. getting a little time-consuming going and collect the buckets once or twice a day, and so we decided to modernize our operation and uh, install pipeline and uh, vacuum systems. Oh, okay, you can do it with the buckets, the old ye olde way. God, 800 buckets and a day? Can you extract the syrup, sap? Um, more than once a day from a tree? Surely it has to, you gotta give it a chance to regenerate or something. Give the poor tree a break. I'm shocked it comes out so easily. These blue spiles here, they're actually called uh, tree saver spiles. The hole is much smaller than a traditional spile. Uh, the tree ends up healing that same year oh. uh, instead of scarring over the years and causing damage to the trees. So cool. this is a much friendlier way to tap the trees. Oh, here we go. Technology. 
Oh, so wow. what you're looking at right now is a pipeline system. Uh, wow. We currently have 4,200 taps. We're going to be expanding to 10,000 taps. What? So all these pipes lead up to a main line, which brings the sap down to a storage tank. 10,000 10, trees? That's amazing. How do you, that must take so much time. I can see why this is a family business, full-time job. So the main lines I was showing you guys earlier all end up in the storage container here. Uh, we have a storage tank in here, our vacuum system, and an extractor. So the vacuum comes in through this PVC pipe here down to the extractor. Uh, this basically just keeps all the vacuum contained and uh, pulls it through the main lines we were showing you guys earlier. So the sap comes in through the main lines, fills these guys up, and then dumps it. Cool. Well, can you, like, uh, get a little crazy and open this up and eat <laughs> or, or taste that pure stuff right there? Is that like, that's nature's maple syrup right there, just pure from the tree. What would that taste like? Oh, look at it. You could bathe in it. No, 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 we can't be doing that. God does so much. At this point, the sugar content is about one to three and a half percent. It still has to be refined to be turned into maple syrup. Oh, so that's why it's so watery. It would just be like sugar water. I'd drink it. Okay, transporting the goods. I wonder how many gallons that is. So can, can they do this? How often can they do this? Um, I've always wondered, because it seems like you don't get to create much syrup, especially if you're um, condensing the raw sap even further. You're not yielding much. So they have to do this quite often, right? So now that we have the sap home and unloaded, it goes back downstairs. The sap coming from the bush is approximately 2 to 3% sugar. Okay. And what we like to do with the reverse osmosis is bring the sugar level up to 8%. So that takes a considerable amount of water out of the system, so there's a lot less time to boil. Reverse osmosis? Is it, should I even bother looking this up? <laughs> is this something you can explain to a simple American quickly? Okay, process where you demineralize or deionize water by pushing it under pressure through a semi-permeable... Okay, so you're basically forcing the sap. Whoops, where's my little flowchart? Oh, here it is. <laughs> Let me make it bigger. You force... This is... We're going to pretend this is sap over here. You force it through a, a membrane, and a lot of the um, s thick, sappy, sugary stuff gets stuck on one side, and just the plain old water gets taken out the other side? I'm assuming? Something like that? Don't quote me. Just a quick explanation of how the reverse osmosis works. There's a feed <laughs> pump that pushes the sap. <laughs> of course he's gonna explain it as soon as I did my hacky little attempt <laughs> through two sets of filters to have it as clean as possible when it goes into what we call the membrane the uh, sap is pushed through the membrane at over 400 pounds per square inch so it's very high pressure on average it takes about uh, 40 liters of sap to make one liter of maple syrup see i just don't get that that is such a small yield you would have to get outrageous amounts of sap to make enough maple syrup for Canada and the rest of the world. If they're supplying 80% of the world's maple syrup. And um, I think what's confused me is that I can go to the grocery store and get it. It's not like there's a shortage. But now I'm thinking, hey, what I'm going and getting is probably this synthetic crap not the good maple syrup from Canada. That's probably more expensive and more scarce. Wow, never thought of it that way. 
And this is where the reverse osmosis comes in, uh, very handy. Uh, last year's numbers, we've collected approximately 160,000 liters of sap to make 4,000 liters of syrup. So there's a lot of evaporation there was saved by cutting out a good part of the evaporation process. 4,000 liters a year? How much is an average bottle? You could have like a liter of maple syrup, right, in a bottle. That's not crazy, right? <laughs> you can have like a gallon, is if I am correctly remembering, depending on how nuts for syrup you are. So that's 4,000 bottles a year? That doesn't sound like much. Are there a lot of these types of maple syrup factories in Canada? We keep the pure water that we remove from the sap and we use it to clean because that water is, uh, how can I say it, perfect water, clear, clean. There are no minerals. Uh, there's nothing in it. It's just a liquid. Water cool. needs minerals, so it's like a magnet. When we use it to clean, it's so much better than tap water. Huh. It, it cleans all our facility, uh, all our equipment, a lot. I never thought of that. Could you sell this water, this magic water? It's like super water for cleaning. Can you sell that? Can you buy that? Better than regular water. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Furnace. Looks cozy. Oh. Oh, are we getting to a point where we have to boil it? or something. And now we just lit the fire, boil down today's sap into some sweet maple syrup. Huh. Is that, is that all there is to it? You boil it down, do, do you add anything to it? Or is it that natural? syrup. <laughs> this stove here is just about the most energy efficient on the market. It's, as you see, it's wood burning, but the way it's made, it's a gasification system. Airtight, we're taking the gases out of the wood and we're burning them on top. That's why you see in the flame, it's like a rolling effect on the top. I just got to say, this was making me think of how cool it would be to own a business like this where you very much know it's just a very straightforward craft. You're darn good at it. You sell this thing that people want. He just owns all this equipment, uh, gathers the sap from the trees, creates the maple syrup, sells it. Just such a pure business that a lot of people love as well. What a cool, like, when you're being... Um, raised in America, no one's like telling you, hey, you could open your own maple syrup distillery or something like that. Maybe not exactly that, but a lot of people earn a, a living doing stuff like this. And that's why I love watching it. So instead of the conventional evaporator, you used to have to put some wood in every 10 minutes to be very efficient. In this case, as the gases burn, we watch our chimney temperature. And as our chimney temperature starts to go down, there's still a lot of wood in there. We just increase the speed of the fan a little bit to get more gases out of the wood to keep that intense heat for almost an hour. Cool. Oh, it's just an hour? An hour of boiling? The sap, as it comes from the tank upstairs, is first circulated into the hood where it's preheated before it hits the pans so that we're not putting cold sap in the pans to cool things down. So as we're boiling along, the sap moves down these three pans, and as it moves down, more and more of the water gets taken out of the sap. Okay. And as it goes more towards the front, it turns more into syrup. Okay. I am curious, is this going to be the finished product right here? That would really blow my mind if they're sell if it's that 
close to the tree sap. Oh, we did reverse osmosis and we boiled it a few times. And this is maple syrup. Is that all there is? Do they have to add sugar or I don't know. As the density gets higher, the automatic draw off is set at a certain level and it pulls a batch of syrup out when it's ready. Oh, there it is. That is hot. It's not very thick though. Maybe because then it's so we hot. adjust the sugar levels in the syrup with hydrometer readings. Okay. Yeah, it's not very thick yet. The art of maple syrup. So I don't syrup. know if you can see, but the red line is right level with the top of the syrup, or just come out a little bit. So our setting was right, and the syrup is coming off at the right density. Okay. Cool. Now what? Oh, are they gonna fil filter it? Like 20 times? What is this? It looks like filters. It is not about to pass through 40 filters, is it? I'm on the edge of my seat. What's about to happen? What is this? So now that the maple syrup is ready, it's about to be filtered. Okay. The syrup passes through this press filter here. It takes out any kind of natural sands in the maple syrup and then passes it along to the bottling unit. Oh, wow. So it is gonna be bottled after this. They're just making sure there's no crap in it. <laughs> no weird tree stuff still in it. But then it's going for bottling. This is all natural maple syrup. lot of very specialty equipment that I have never seen in my life. I imagine opening your own maple syrup plant is a pretty expensive... There's a little bit of uh, natural sands that gets carried out through the sap throughout oh, yeah. the whole process. Yeah. The sand is too fine for all the other filters to catch. Wow. So that's why we pass it through this set of filters and you'll see why. There's maybe, quite a bit of sand. Maybe you can buy a version where they keep the sand. <laughs> the really natural syrup. Has a little bit of that tree sand still in it, a little kick. That, uh, that pushes through. Okay. So those are the natural sands that get caught in the filters in this process. Oh my If we gosh. wouldn't filter our maple syrup, that would end up at the bottom of, uh, of your bottles, of the jugs. Wow. So it's a very important part of uh, making maple syrup. Yeah. Huh. I guarantee you, before they had modern equipment, they definitely ate that stuff as well when they were making simpler maple syrup. This is what I'm talking about, these jugs. These are the most Canadian maple syrup jugs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, you would be hard, you're actually kind of hard pressed to find jugs like this in America, although we do have them. We, you know what, I might as well show you what we have. Um, uh, syrup, if I just look up syrup and go to an image, this is what we get. This is what you find on, oop, can I just look at the Aunt Jemima? Can I look at a photo? Yeah, here we go. Make that a little bigger. This is what we get. This has to exist in Canada too, right? But I'm convinced this is not Canadian made, natural, good maple syrup. 
this just says original syrup and <laughs> it's always in this plastic bottle always but you <laughs> I mean I gotta say as an American you learn to like it it's got a distinct flavor you, you learn to like it Liquid gold, as they say. So this concludes our day at Garland Sugar Shack. I hope you enjoyed watching. Here in my hands, we hold the final product. Oh. Some uh, good sweet maple syrup. It's smaller than I thought. How much is that? That's Is that a liter? It's not quite a liter. Gosh, I can't picture a liter in my mind. <laughs> I only know uh, quarts and gallons and cups, you know, weird imperial units like that. And we also do a multitude of other products like maple butter, sugar, candies. If you're ever in the area, stop by and see us. Maple butter? Maple butter? What is that? You can also check us out on garlandsugarshack.ca and uh, like our page on Facebook and follow us. And cool. Keep up to date with everything we're up to. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow. That was cool. This was by Stereochroma. I have to give that a like. I enjoyed that a lot. I love videos like this. Making things and making things and maple syrup. Count me in. If I, uh, I kind of want to look up their place now. Garland Sugar Shack. Here's their website. Uh, how much, how expensive is this? Maple syrup and goodies store. Oh, they sell equipment too. Hold on. Oh, take me to the goodies store. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Um, I mean, only $14 for 500 milliliters. Oh, I think he was holding a 500 milliliter bottle. $24 for one liter, $40 for two liters. $24 for one liter. Here's the funny thing. The weird American syrup bottle that I showed you, you can buy that for like a dollar. One. One singular dollar. But I'd be willing to pay 14 for good syrup. At least to try it, you know? Wow, there's a lot of can maple candy, maple butter, maple taffy, maple wine. Okay, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> okay, this is what I came for, though. How to make maple syrup in Canada. Very interesting. Exactly what I was hoping for. Loved it. Fascinating. It sure comes across as a very natural um, creation. They're just really refining what's straight out of the tree. And then you're eating that. And that's it. Um, pretty sure I've never had it. I feel like that'd be uh, an epiphany. A moment. Be like, oh, this is the flavor of maple right here. And then I'd have to collect myself again. Come back to Earth. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, things in Canada, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.